back to you now with the next stage of our Christmas stocking. And now it's sort of like we're in December. Time is running out. We really need to focus on getting this stocking finished so that we can hang it up for Santa on Christmas Eve. I finished the cruel um, stem stitch along the top of the, uh, of the stocking design. Um, and I've moved the frame so that now the lovely snow clouds are actually in the center, well, center towards the top um, of the frame ready for me to do. Now, Philippa did say to me that we have to be really careful when we're going around the corners here of, um, of, of the um, clouds. So what I'm going to do is suggest that we both sit together now and watch Philippa's video that she filmed in May when she first started doing um, these designs for her grandchildren and um, see how to, how to get started and we'll come back and get started on this first cloud. So let's watch Philippa. So on this stocking, we've used the same color blue behind and the yellow. So I've only used two colors, but now I'm going to go into a third color, which is the, um, the snow cloud. So I'm looking at the cloud here and that's going to use cruel outline or cruel stem stitch, which is exactly the same stitch that we used. Excuse me, can you move along to the top, Richard? At the top of the stocking along here. You've got to be telepathic if you're going to be my cameraman with my, any modicum of success. Okay, so on this uh, top line here, I made quite a big stitch because it's along a straight line. But when you go around these corners, they're going to be slightly smaller. So if you work the background before the foreground, we've worked the background here in the laden count work. And now we're going to do the background of this cloud because this piece here is actually behind the lower end here. So I'll just cast on. And because I'm right-handed, I'm uh, starting on the left corner here, but we're going to work a very rough stem stitch, or even you could do a split stitch, it wouldn't matter. But if the first line is a cruel outline or cruel stem stitch, then you'll find that that actually gives your a cloud a lovely shape. So I'm moving the loop away from the curve like we always do and I'm trying to get away with a stitch that's as long as I can possibly make it and you'll see the tension is actually quite loose. I'm not gathering at all because this linen isn't all that tight on the frame. It's, it's not easy to get uh, linen to be of this sort of um, thickness to be very drum tight on a roller bar frame but it's fine and if you don't have any frame at all and you don't want to buy one then don't worry you could actually use a picture frame and take the picture out or a mirror frame anything I have one that I got from a charity shop that I'm going to set up with a design in and um, so that it actually is pulled tight away from itself. So you just keep going round and round the edge, <laughs> lacing the edge. <clears throat> so we've worked our way round here. It's, there are faults, that's fine. It's cloud, it's not going to be a uniform shape. And worked our way down to the corner. Now, to turn a corner, you have to jump forwards for the next bit. So you can't go down and up and down in that same place, unless actually you crossed it over like a cross stitch, which of course, you're very welcome to do if you want to. But my method would be to come up a little way along that uh, stitching line and then go back down in the end of the first stitching line. Then again, come back up. So that's about the length of your first stitch and go down here and then come up and continue as normal. And I'll just repeat that, Richard, if you hang on a minute, going around this corner. You can see where it goes flatter, I can make longer stitches. And that's one of the lovely things about cool work. The stitches, are they're not a uniform length. So it's a very forgiving medium. Right, so I'm finishing on the end there, just with a double stitch. Now, so you come again for a corner, work away from the end of the, your line, and then come back to the end of the line, then come up along the line, go down and finish the corner. Now, you just work this as roughly as you want. And I can actually go 
both ways. I can actually reverse this stitch and stitch along that way. And basically you're doing what my niece once said to me, your um, Auntie Philly, she said, you're, it's just coloring in. It's easy and it kind of is easy. You don't have to be exact. You could do a, a long cross stitch like that and just color in, color in, color in. So you could do a back stitch, you could come up, you can go through the last stitch and just color in because what you, I want you to do is work these colors across areas. So we have drawn out, um, there, are, there are areas drawn on the design that you can download, but you don't have to stick to those at all. So those areas are similar to this one here and you can see I, I obviously started off really neatly and then had a glass of wine or been craving Earl Grey or have a late night um, and then yesterday I did this one which is in a I want to show you now because it's in a darker blue and it's got a green couching and um, again the, the top line is one of the two colours used in here so it's the laid work used again, exactly the same colour, but in a double thread for the top line. And then these are the, just the random shapes. I'm amazed that looks so nice because I honestly just worked it really, really untidily. And then when it wasn't subtle enough, I just ran through with the another colour. I just took the white again and this pale colour again, and I just, I just added little bits. And it's ended up, I'm rather proud of it actually. I think it's rather good. Well, that was really useful. I'm really glad we've had a look at that again, just to get the idea of how we turn those corners on the clouds. So now it's time to thread the needle and let's get started stitching. Right, so I'm just going to um, cut the, the cellophane wrapping that we've pop popped on to tight, keep it nice and tight um, in the frame. And like Philippa did, I'm going to cast on in the middle of the cloud where we're going to cover up. And the colour that I'm using, oh, my return is very, very long there. The colour we're using is a lovely snowy white, which is an Appleton's wool, and it's 991B, which is a beautiful little colour for a snow cloud. Oops. All right, I'm just going to cast on like that. Pop that down because that's going to be covered by some more cruel <laughs> stem stitch. Now I'm going to start in this bottom here and what Philip was saying could be a little bit rough um, way of doing it so I'm trying to remember which way I was doing it now before. Gosh it's <laughs> so we go down because it is a snow cloud so it's not going to be an even edge, as she says, which is quite right. It's quite apt that we're doing, I'll just turn that, make that return a bit shorter there on the needle, because it'll rough the wool up. Um, there's snow actually, um, so that goes to that. There's snow in the next county in Yorkshire. So who knows, we may have snow tonight in Cumbria, and to have been doing a snow cloud would be quite sweet. Um, Oh look, it's making that, can you hear that lovely drum sound? I haven't, I've tightened up the, the hoop because it was a little bit slack before when I was using it. And so I thought, I did tighten it when I was using it, but then what I've done is I've tightened it a little tighter when I moved, moved the, um, the design up. So there we go. There we go. Just roughly going around this lovely, Snow cloud. I'm quite looking forward to getting to that corner to try out that technique that Philippa <laughs> showed us. Um, I'm not going to do the crossover one, I'm going to do the one that she did. She actually did on the design, not the one she spoke about. So stick with what she was showing because I think that's the safest way, don't you? I'd be interested to see your designs, how they're coming along because. Um, it's always nice to see how other people have interpreted the design. You know, every every piece is different, and it would be just so nice to see how you're getting on. So, if you could email them into us or share them on Facebook, tag us in on Facebook or Instagram, that would be super. 
It looks like my wool's going to run out at this spot. Now she said, don't come back up there. Jump ahead. Come up. And go back. Oh, I think I'm just going to run out of a little bit of wool here. Right, I've started the second row coming back and I tried like Philippa did, doing it the other way. And actually I found it a little bit easier. But one thing I did notice when I did watch Philippa's video before was the loop I'd been putting on the first one was this way towards my body. But Philippa was using the loop away from her as she did it each one. So that's what I'm starting to do now on this second row. I'm putting the loop above and then coming through and pulling through. So making sure that that's above and down, then taking the needle back. It's like a blankety back stitch, isn't it? It's, it's an interesting little stitch. And I can see why Philippa was called, Philippa's uh, niece called it, oops, losing, the, losing my needle, calling it colouring in with wool, because you can see it building up. And it is quite surprising, I think, how quickly it is going to do that because you can see between the next one that it's, it's coming quite near so that's quite interesting what i do find a problem with is where i've cast on quite clumsily <laughs> um it's it, it i mean it does go over but it's it's it i get a little bit frightened when i see that big clump of wool there so as philippa says though it is such a forgiving um medium literally just stitching over things and not going through the wall is probably a good idea I imagine um, you can rectify a lot of, uh, of the, of the uh, problems you may have had earlier on in the stitching so that's going through that big casting on thing there so that makes the cloud look really 3D there though so it's not a bad thing I don't think that we're doing it like this um, so I think it's that thing, just don't be frightened of it. And as Philip has said before, I've heard her say before, there's no needlework police coming to tell you you're doing it wrong. Whatever you're doing, it's what you want, you know, it's your piece at the end of the day. And if it is slightly different how you're working it, well, mm, it gives it character, as Katie says. But it is nice to learn how to do things properly, I think. And then once you've learned how to do something properly, you can go a bit off piste, can't you, and design stuff. Now, what I think I might do here, when I get to the bottom, is to carry on and do that first row going back that way. Because the other thing I noticed was Philippa's, Philippa's design is slightly different to this one because it, it was her original design. So then I go up here with a little stitch, trying to cover the blue. So a little stitch goes there. Then I come up here and then carry on as I would do previously. So that needs to go to the top. That comes down. My return's getting longer and longer, it seems. And then that comes up there. Oh, I feel so excited when I come and actually complete one of those. And just remembering to keep that wool above the cloud like that. And then come through. Well, I'm sure you've had enough of watching me fumbling around with this and you want to maybe watch Philippa's video again. Right, so I'm just going to continue doing this lovely um, cruel stem stitch, colouring in with wool. And I look forward to seeing you later in the week and hopefully showing you my finished cloud at least at the top. So enjoy your stitching, happy stitching and see you later. Thank you.